what you're looking at here, hopefully, is the brown paper I used to redo the contact, contact sketch of the otter. I made a side view, and on the same sheet, because it was so big, I made the overhead view of the otter as well. That leads me up to my next step. That's going to be skinning the otter, said otter. The otter said. Uh, here's some of the tools I'll be using. Of course, I've got my handy dandy uh, additional light source, uh, which will help my old eyes see in tight quarters. I've got a good scalpel, nice heavy uh, scalpel blade. Number six scalpel blade with, I think it's a number 22. Yeah, 22 or 23. I think it's a 23 blade. It's a, it's like the 22, but it has more, more uh, tapered tip to it than a 22 normally does. I've got several knives from uh, J.A. Henkels. We have a straight edge paring knife, a curved tipped paring knife, and a curved blade paring knife. I have my, um, one of my favorite edge uh, my, uh, sharpeners, it's the uh, Edge Maker Pro. Uh, it has a, a heavy side for putting the edge on the blade and a, a little a finer side for honing the edge. Of course, then I've got uh, my regular uh, sharpening steel and a couple of uh, hemostat clamps to hold the skin out of my way and whatnot uh, during the skinning process. And of course, as a further assist, I have a uh, hooked skinning gambrel hanging from one of the beams of my building. Uh, this, these hooks will go into the Achilles heel, the hock area, after the skin has been pulled down over the hind foot. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do I'm going to plug his vent, aka his anal opening. I'm going to simply take some cotton and I'm going to go over and I'm going to put the cotton up into his rectal canal and get it in there. That'll keep any fluids and any feces from finding its way out as it's cut through. Now, speaking of cuts, the cuts I'm going to make, I mentioned earlier that uh, sometimes I will, I, will, I will not cut through the pads, that's for sure, but sometimes I will cut behind the pads, back from the pads, or just behind or ahead of the, uh, the point of the heel. On this big fella, because I'm going to mount him up myself, I'm going to start the cut uh, above the, the point of the heel. So the heel is here. I'm going to start the cut here, and then I will revert the foot all the way down and just turn it completely inside out like a sock to get the, uh, the feet all the way down to the toes. The toes have been injected. I did inject some Kimmel 4 solution into the toes to soften them up a bit. The cut will run from just behind the heel, will run down the back of the leg along that flap of skin that I pointed out earlier. It'll go around the anal opening, behind the anal opening, I should say, and that will then allow the, the tail to be opened all the way to the tip. And on these animals, you have to open the tail all the way to the tip. There's no two ways about it. It has to be skinned out. About, I've seen, I've seen people who skin for fur just pull the tail. They skin about halfway down, and then they pull the tail out. Well. That's fine if you're not too concerned about uh, not disrupting the roots of the hair uh, because in the fur industry, they do not use the tail. Now, there is a seller online who does sell otter tails, but when they sell an otter for the fur, they sell the body of the otter. They don't, they don't keep the feet on and they're not too concerned about the facial details. They cut the feet off immediately. This is being skinned for taxidermy. This will be skinned carefully. The tail will be carved out of its skin all the way to the tip. And with that, I'm going to get started.
Okay, I've gone in behind the heel, and I'm going down the rear edge, I guess you could call it, the rear edge of the hind leg, which is actually that flap of skin, okay? I'm going to continue on down. I gotta get some separation here. All right, there we go. Okay. Down. I'm going to continue on down toward the anus, the anal opening, the vent. Let me get my curved knife here for this. I want to use a shorter blade at this point. And I think the curved knife works best. This is the way I did it on the, uh, the last auto I skinned. Let me put an edge on this real quick. Using my handy dandy Edge Pro. Huge scrotum sack. This is a this was a powerful breeding male. Okay. Well, we're gonna go around, we're gonna go behind the anal opening here. start on the other hind leg. I'm going to go through the same way. A lot of fuzzy on this fur. A real, real thick undercoat. There's a lot of loose tissue in here, so I'm going to I'm going to employ my scalpel at this point. Back off to the other side. Oh man, it's kind of blubbery back here. Okay, here we go. Get the incision to meet on both sides here. Okay, I've just changed my scalpel blade for a new one. That one went through the last otter, so it was kind of dull. Here we go. Now we're cruising along, cutting a song. Uh, uh, that got a little sloppy. 
That's on me. That got a little sloppy. There we go. Okay. All right. Make sure you can you you slice through the connective tissue. It's called the, the connective fascia. The connective fascia. Fascia. All right. Right now, I'm going to get the. Uh, I'm going to grab hold of this with the hemostat. My fingers are just too damn big, they constantly get in the way. <laughs> I'm gonna skin this through. Now what I'm cutting here, this is actually the tube for the anus, okay? You've got the testicle sac, the scrotum, and then right behind it we've got the, this is the tube for the rectum or the anus. I cut through this and you can see there's the cotton that was put in there earlier. And let me take another hemostat, take another hemostat, hemostat, and push the cotton further down, away from where I'm going to cut. All right, I just punctured his scent gland, which is deep down in there as well. And I want to, I want to block that off. I mean, scent gland can be a little nasty smelling especially on a big male auto like this guy All right. now let's be careful here just cut carefully oops There we go. The anus has been detached. The rectum left intact. The sink lens are left intact. And I'm going to start going up and skiing along the. Basically, going to skin up the scrotum to release the testicles from their pouch. But first, we've got the anal glands. You can see that's what's causing this, this shiny fluid here on the outside. It's, it's the, the anal glands. It's just a matter of getting them detached and to come away. They're a little on the oily side. That's one. That's one oil gland right there, detached. That's the head of one, one of the oil glands, right there. That right there is the tip of the oil gland. There's one on the other side. Take that away. There. Now we go along. We're basically dissecting these portions away from the skin.
There we go. I think what I had before, this, I was mistaking this, the oil gland, I was mistaking this for the, the rectum. And that's why the oil seeped out. You could tell when you punctured it because you will smell. It, it's not wholly unpleasant. It's not as horrible as a skunk. You puncture a skunk scent gland or even a mink, you really got something. More than a, more even than an oil gland, this is more of a, uh, rather than a scent gland, this is more of an oil gland. Uh, it's what the otter would, will go down here and squeeze it and get the oil out. That's what's all over here. They'll get the oil out and they, they, they treat their fur and basically that's what waterproofs their fur. And they do it on their own so well. Nature has a way of taking care of her own. Now these are the testicles here. This is one, we're well, coming up on one. Here's the other. That's the testicles. I'm pushing against them from the outside. Oh, you'll notice I am wearing gloves at this point. That's one testicle. Here's the second. It's a full-blown boy. He's got two testicles. You take that phrase however you want it. I, I just speak without thinking. Sorry, folks. That's me. Okay, now that I've got those organs exposed, I'm going to go back down the legs. Skin around this. All right, I've gone around and detached a lot of the uh, the tissue that's holding things in place, and I'm now I've now reached the the male part here. Now there's a connective tissue that connects the penal bone, the baculum, otherwise called the os penis, or penis bone, is a fascia connective tissue that attaches it to the rest of the body. I just want to make a little hole there so I can hook it, and I can then continue skinning forward. Yeah, there's a bone in the penis of an otter the way there's a bone in the penis of most mammals, including most primates, except man. We don't have one. And that proves there's no bones in ice cream. Make of that what you will, I don't care. I do want to get this free from the sheath in the skin. And that's a matter of skinning it backwards, pulling it, skinning backwards. You don't want to put a hole in the skin, but you do want to make this detached. You do want to get this detached, I should say. Okay. There's more connective tissue here. Skinning is not pretty, all right? It's not pretty. It's pretty damn sloppy. It's not the prettiest thing in the world.
And I'm going to go ahead and I'm simply going to cut this loose and then trim it, trim it back later. So the penis has been detached, the os penis, the bone is intact inside. And it's on the outside, there's the penis sheath. It's a male otter, what can I say? He's a boy! <laughs> now I'm gonna keep going in. I'm gonna get as much loose as I can without puncturing the abdomen. You do not want to go through the abdominal wall. Now I'm being a little extra careful with this because I'm going to freeze the carcass in position, make a, a molding plaster, number one molding plaster mold of the carcass. That will be the basis of my clay sculpture. Now, I'm going to skin back the heel right here. And I have to do that by turning the skin back over the heel. Make sure I don't I do not cut through the heel skin itself. It's kind of tough to get a grip on here. There's a lot of oil from the oil glands itself. It just makes it a little tough to get a get a foothold as you as, as it were. side so I can skin around the hind leg the outside of the hind leg all this meat that's attached and holding needs to be separated you don't want to well for, for what my impart purpose is in with this carcass I don't want to slice up the carcass a whole lot where the blade does cut into the meat, the flesh of the carcass, that will be mended using a CA glue before the carcass is posed and frozen. I try and restore the surface structure that the knife nicks. Now here is the heel exposed, right here. This is the heel exposed. Let's raise this up a touch. Get the angle off his off his testicles. There we go. And there we go like so. Want to make sure we're freeing the skin and not slicing through it. Case skinning for taxidermy is a little more involved than just cutting off the feet and ripping through it for fur. We're a little more, we're actually, we're, we are a lot more careful than skinning for, for uh, the fur market. And when we're skinning to create a carcass cast, to use in, or to use for a clay model or even as a three-dimensional anatomical reference cast, you want to be careful. 
All right, I've gone around. I'm nearly encircling the hind foot. I'm at the point where I can very nearly get my finger through from one side to the other on the hind foot. Okay. I need to skin down the thigh, the out, uh, the outside of the thigh, just a bit. Careful here. There we go. Ah, oh, that's nice. A little cut, in the, a little cut in the uh, in the flesh right here, but that'll be that'll be easily sealed, repaired to make the mold. Better to cut the meat of the animal of the carcass than to cut the skin. Duh. Obviously, it's obvious but true. <laughs> obvious but true. Now I use, I change off my knife blades. Oh, I, I switch off to different knives during the course of skinning. Always making sure I put an edge back on my knife. But I do switch off. Sometimes a curved knife. Uh, they call a bird's beak knife. It's got the shorter blade. Is better, whereas the long knife, even even just using the tip of the long knife, can create problems if it taps against the skin anywhere and what have you. You don't want that. You don't want that. So oftentimes, like when I'm in here, where where this is tight. I'll come in and I'll use my shorter blade with the curved tip. Ah, here we go, we're through. Okay, I've gone through. This is where the heel meets the calf, all right, on the animal. This is where the heel meets the calf. Okay, I'm going to continue skinning down. Till I reach the toes. Now you can turn the skin right side out. Make sure you know where you're going. You notice the first toe on the inside of the foot is a short toe, so we're going to reach that one first. I like to get as far down the toe as possible. I like to try and get right down to the base of the claw. Eventually that toe bone will completely be removed from the skin, whether it happens during the main skinning process now or later. If I cut through the toe bone and I then dissect it out of the foot at a later time before salting it will be removed entirely and when it is removed if it doesn't if it's not removed while it's attached to the foot it will later be reattached to the foot for casting of the carcass now I've got that rear oil gland the anal oil gland is leaking quite a bit so I just put a cotton ball on it it's just oil. It's just, it's the otter's own natural oil. It's not a scent gland. It does have an aroma to it. It's not horrible. Kind of fishy, actually, which, you know, it's an aquatic mammal. And from what I understand, their diet is not comprised primarily of fish. They will eat fish, but mostly their diet is comprised of frogs, crayfish, of course, baby birds which is true of all the weasel clan. They will kill and eat baby birds. Okay, this is a real tough toe here, so. Tough toeies. I'm gonna continue skinning around the foot off camera until I reach that toe 
And I'll come back on camera to show it being disconnected from the Okay, hook. here we go. I've been pulling and cutting, pulling and cutting. And to be sure I'm cutting towards the foot and not towards the foot skin. So I'm cutting toward the bone. Now, you can see the, the hind foot is really pretty well inside out. Let's see where we're at. We're right here, okay, at this point. Whoops. I'm right here at this point on the toe. Let's see where it is on the outside. Turn this right side out. Pull the foot out. Let's get in there with the tip of a hemostat. Point down, point out how far down I've gone. You can see the hemostat messing about inside the skin. I want to get, I want to get down to about the foot pad, so I have a little more to go. And it's, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. It might be a little dry. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it might be a little on the dry side. I pull. Careful not to rip the foot off because that, that can happen as well. That can happen as well. You have to be very, very careful. Sometimes having the uh, little touch of arthritis in my hands can be a bit of a burden, but sometimes, like in this, in this case, well, you don't want to pull too hard, like I was able to do a few years ago, and just pull the whole darn foot skin off and leave the toes attached to the carcass. So having a little touch of arthritis where I can't grab quite as much, in this case is a, sort of a sick blessing, I guess you could say. <laughs> I'm coming along the tops of the knuckles, on the rear toes. I'm going to grab another hemostat. Lock the blade of the hemostat on the toe bone so I can pull on the toe bone. You see how dry that skin is? See how dry that is? Let me get the syringe and inject that. Okay. I've got the syringe. I'm going to go inside. I'm going, whoops. I need to get it in there. There we go. Let's try that. Alright, that's pretty good. It's still very, very dry, so I have to be very, 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 very careful here. Alright, that's that's going along nice. Now get this skinned around the knuckle here. Skinderella. No. Okay. getting right down to the last joint I think I'm just gonna cut through here I think I'm down I'm down I think to the last joint so I'm gonna go ahead and cut through that joint yeah that's the last joint all right let's see if we can't just pop that out of there all right that just came apart that's nice that just came apart. Right, knife blade across the top. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Right, well, now I'm digging down into that toe to get to the very last joint at the claw, and I do not want to cut the skin, so I want to be very, very, very careful here. I'm working down on, on, on the tabletop to do this. I'm peeling the skin forward with the knife blade as I go, and I'm getting this loosened up. Here we go. Now, let's 
grab this with the hemostat and see if I can't just kind of pull that loose. I don't want to break the toe bones as much as I don't want to clip the skin. All right, where's that? Very, 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 very tip of the scalpel blade. Get in there. Cut those ligaments. All right. Now, time to break out the Leatherman tool and just give a little twist. This has got more. Uh, okay, right there, right there, right here is the joint being exposed down in the toe. That's to the very last joint. It's just been exposed. Cutting it free. Grab it again. Twist and shout. And you can see there's the end of the bone right there. And out it comes. Now what's left in there besides the tendons is simply the pad which will be cleaned out later and the claw. Because you want the claw to stay attached to the skin and not the bone, the toe bone. Now what you have to be aware of going around the foot are the webs. There are webbing their outer feet have got webbings. Now this skin is very, very dry. I'm not sure how long they were frozen, but I can say that if they're not tightly wrapped, like, or even, you know, the, the best case scenario for freezing an animal whole is to vacuum close it. It's to vacuum bag it. That's the best, the best way to freeze an animal. Also, another little handy dandy tip when you're freezing an animal like an otter or raccoon or any, any animal, even a squirrel, pack some wet cotton balls or wet cotton around the pads of the feet and on the tops of the feet. Then wrap an old or wrap a, a little detailing rag around that. Make sure it's damp. Wrap all four feet. Wrap the face the same way. Moisten it down. Moisten the features. Wrap the face so that when it freezes it will not the moisture will not be drawn out of those features they will not be the moisture will not be drawn out of the feet and toes and the fingers they will not be drawn drawn out of the features of the face the nose the eyelids the ears there's a way you can wrap these things to avoid all of this um needing to be injected and that's what i'm doing again i'm going to inject down into this foot again It's just coming out, but it's still under the skin, even though it is backing out just a bit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to treat the rest of the toes the way we just did this one here. And uh, just before I detach all the toes, I'll come back on camera. Well, gang, I'm down to the last toe. Yeah. I'll tell you, these toes are really super duper dry. This is not, this has not been easy. This has taken a lot longer than I wanted to, but if it wasn't for the fact that I'm planning on sculpting a form out of this, I would have just cut the toes off way up here and pick them out later. I'm just being a little pig headed about this. I'm just being a little pig headed about this. I want to get these toes out. You can see how I'm going and what I'm doing in order okay. to get them out. I think this will get it. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. You can see the joint. You see the joint right in here is exposed. You see that? Cut through there. without cutting the skin.
<laughs> I didn't do it. All right, pretty tough tendons in there. There we go. All of these toes are right down to the last joint, the last joint being the joint that contains the claw of the foot. There's the foot. Inside out. Let me turn it right side out if I can on camera real quick. You can see, see we got the toes right down to the last claw. There we are. There are the webs, the webbings. See how complex the foot, the hind foot especially of an otter is. But these claws go all the way to the tip. Or I should say the bones were skinned all the way to the tip. This took an inordinate amount of time. Uh, and I only did it because, like I say, I'm using this in a sculpture. I would recommend anyone else, you can cut them at the joint before uh, the claw joint, the next to last joint, okay? But there we have one foot taken apart, like so. Now to start on the other foot. Except this one I'm going to really, really, really inject. I injected this one as I went along. I'm going to try and totally inject this one before I even start skinning it. Until next time, ta-ta!